Welcome to another Tea and God video. Today we are going to be doing Psalm 119 as our topic of study. But before we drive right in, and I even wrote some fancy notes today, so I'm not just winging it. Um, but before we dive right on in, our tea of the day is um, it's Good Earth's Wild Chai Tea. And I'm gonna be honest, this is not my favorite probably as I throw it <laughs> probably um it's I don't think it's my favorite just because you know chai teas at the coffee shop have like a kajillion grams of sugar and they're delicious um but this one is just just plain old tea so this is our drink of the day so today like I said we'll be diving right on into Psalm 119 and um with today's video I was trying to figure out what portion of scripture I wanted to do just because I didn't really get a ton out of the last couple of chapters of Genesis when I was reading this morning which is why we went right into Psalms because I actually just turned I think this is the first video since I've turned 18 that I'm filming and I also just graduated and Psalm 119 is one of my favorites so I figured I may as well read it because I haven't read it and dove right like I haven't done a full dive into it for a while so we will be reading Psalm 119 today so if you guys want to grab your Bibles and your own cup of tea, I will give you a second to do that and then let's dive right on in. All right, welcome back guys. Diving right on into Psalm 119, I'm going to just go by the portions that my Bible has Psalm 119 split into and there were a lot of them. So we'll start right off with the first portion. So again, I am using this, the Canvas Bible. It's the message translation. I use it in a lot of them just because I like the way that it's worded. And I don't know the verse numbers, which is why I'm saying we're just going to go in the portions mine has split into. So, the first portion of Psalm 119 says, You're blessed when you stay on course, walking steadily on the road revealed by God. You're blessed when you follow his directions, doing your best to find him. That's right. You don't go off on your own. You walk straight along the road, he said. You, God, prescribed the way to live. Now you expect us to live it. Oh, that my steps might be steady, keeping to the course you set. Then I'd never have any regret, regrets in comparing my life with your counsel. I thank you for speaking straight from your heart. I learned the pattern of your righteous ways. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Don't ever walk off and leave me. So, the things that I got from that portion, um, I think it's really important to remember that in order for us to be doing our best, we need to be staying on the path that God gave us and that God is directing us to do, you know? Like, we can think, oh, I want to do blah 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 or I want to do this or that. But really, if it's not what God is telling you to do or what God has called you to do, you're not going to be living your best. So it's important to remember that for us to be our best selves and to live our best lives, we need to keep in mind what God has called us to do, which is obviously different for each of us. Um, the next thing that I thought I, that I really liked in that little portion was that it says... You, God, prescribed the way to live. Now you expect us to live it. And I think it's really important sometimes to realize that, you know, God has showed us how to live righteously, how to do it. But we have to actually take the steps it takes to go and live it, you know? So that was another thing I took away. And um, I also really like how in the last verse or last portion of this section section of Psalm 119 it says don't ever walk off and leave me and I thought that was interesting because really God isn't the one that leaves we're the ones that leave you know like God is always right there beside us he is always standing there wait, ready and waiting for us to call on him and a lot of times we don't so yeah um the next portion in my bible is portion number two as it's you know cool name um, it says, how can a young person live a clean life? Be carefully reading the map of your word. I'm single-minded in pursuit of you. Don't let me miss the road signs you've posted. I've banked your promises in the vault of my heart, so I won't send myself bankrupt. Be blessed, God. Train me in your ways of wise living. I'll transfer to my lips all the counsel that comes from your mouth. I delight far more in you and I delight far more in what you tell me about living than in gathering a pile of riches. I ponder every morsel of wisdom from you. I attentively watch how you've done it. I relish everything you've told me of life. I won't forget a word of it. And what I got out of that portion is just how important it is and how God's guidance should really be the most valuable thing to us. We shouldn't care much about, you know, 
driving the fanciest car, wearing the fanciest clothes, or having the biggest, fanciest house and best decor and whatever. Because really, none of that matters. All that matters is our walk with God and in showing others Christ's love. And once we realize that and realize that that is the most important thing, I think that's when we really start to begin to live our own lives and to live the paths that God has laid out for us. So that was just a portion I, or something I got out of that portion. I also think it's important for us to remember that we need to remember what God has told us. I relish everything you've told me of life. I won't forget a word of it. I think it's really important for us to remember and to follow through with those things rather than just knowing them but not applying them. So portion three, <laughs> which I might re-say the rest of the portions wrong because I didn't realize this one is split already. But the next portion says, um, be generous with me and I'll live a full life. Not for a minute will I take my eyes off uh, off your road. Open my eyes so I can see what you show of your miracle wonders. I am a stranger in these parts. Give me clear directions. My soul is starved and hungry, ravenous, insatiable for your nourishing commands. And those who think they know so much, ignoring everything you tell them, let them have it. I have been careful to do just what you've said. While bad neighbors maliciously gossip about me, I am absorbed in pondering your wise counsel. Yes, your sayings on life are what give me delight. I listen to them as to good neighbors. And I think that it's really important um, for us to remember that we are strangers on this earth and we need God's guidance in order to do our absolute and utmost best. And I, I just liked how that was worded. I'm a stranger in these parts. Give me clear directions. And I feel like for many of us, that is exactly how life is 90% of the time. We don't know where we're going. We don't know what we want out of life. We don't know what we're supposed to be doing. But really God is the best person at giving directions. I mean, he, in, he created everything and invented everything and created the minds that created everything. So he, you know, knows everything. And so he's going to give us the best directions we can possibly get, but we have to be able to get quiet in, in ourselves and in the word and just really shut our own mind off so that we can hear what he's telling us to do, if that makes sense. The next portion, which is actually portion four, says, I'm feeling terrible. I couldn't feel worse. Get me on my feet again. You promised, remember? When I told my story, you responded. Train me well in your deep wisdom. Help me understand these things, inside and out, so I can ponder your miracle wonders. My sad life's dilapidated, a falling down barn. Build me up again by your word. Barricade the road that goes nowhere. Grace me with your clear revelation. I choose the true road to somewhere. I post your road signs at every curve and corner. I gasp and I grasp and cling to whatever you tell me, God, don't let me down. I'll run the course you lay out for me if you just show me how. And I really like that portion. I really, really, really do because that is so many times me. That yelling like, God, I don't know what I'm doing. You need to tell me what you're doing. Like, you said you were gonna be here. What are you doing? Where are you? And I think it's so important to remember that God knows our story and he responds to it and he builds us up by his word and it's so important for us to realize that and to know that you know he's got it he knows what he's doing he's got a plan for everything and he's going to bring it into fruition and into making your um like your hardships in trials and tests those are what's going to grow you and it's so easy to forget that but we need to remember that that is exactly why those things are happening is so that we can become better people and in turn be able to better show people God's love because of what we've been through, because we've been where they are and we know the hurt that they're experiencing. So, I almost said this wrong, <laughs> section five says, God, teach me lessons for living so I can stay the course. Give me insight so I can do what you tell me. My whole life, one, so one long obedient response. Guide me down the road of your commandments. I love traveling this freeway. Give me a bent for your words of wisdom and not for piling up loot. Divert my eyes from toys and trinkets. Invigorate me on the pilgrim way. Affirm your promises to me. Promises to, promises made to all who fear you. Deflect the harsh words of my critics, but what you say is always so good. See how hungry I am for your counsel. Preserve my life through your righteous ways. And really, I think this portion is telling us that we need to allow our lives to radiate God's love to others. Because, really... You know, church is just a building. Church, in the truest definition of the word, is wherever two or more are gathered. It's where God shows up. And really, it can be so easy for us to forget sometimes that we are a church to so many people around us. There are so many people around us who are not saved, who do not know God's love, who, you know, don't know the, sal the story of salvation and who aren't 
you know, don't have their own faith in God. And when you realize that you're the one that is most likely their only example of a Christian, that can really change your perspective on things and really show you just, you know, how important it is to love on others and to show them Christ's love and to show them, you know, God's grace. Because frankly, we all need a lot of Jesus and a lot of grace. But I don't know, that just, that one really stood out to me that we need to let our lives radiate God's light and God's love into other people. And um, another thing, sorry, my other thing that I really took out of that portion is that we need to focus on our calling and not on our possessions because it can be so easy in the world of, you know, world of evangelism and just in Christian ministry in general. these other people and to think oh wow so and so's really made it because they're making this much a year and they're doing all this other stuff and they have this amazing thing or that amazing house or car or vacation home or you know whatever but really does any of that matter no because frankly you could be you know you could be at a small college and you could be one of the only Christians there as far as you know of and you could just start showing God's love to your classmates or to your professors or to your colleagues at work or to your customers at work depending on you know your career or your job um, and if you start showing God's love you could say like you could really transform people's lives without even realizing it and it's really not about getting compensated for what we do it's for the motive behind doing it and how it can help other people, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know. I would much rather be the type of person that can show love to others and not have the bit, the biggest, best, newest, whatever, but be showing people truly God's love versus being somebody who has those things but can't fully show others the love or isn't as generous because they are worried about, well, what if, what if this happens to this thing if I let them borrow it? Like, that's not what matters, you know? It's, it's, what really matters is showing that, you know, God is the most important thing in our lives. And I think it's really important to remember that when we're going through different things. Sorry, I rambled on that one longer than I should have. <laughs> so the next portion is number six. Sorry, these aren't numbered in my Bible, so it's kind of like, you know. So the sixth portion that I thought was, that I got a lot out of was, let your love God shape my life with salvation exactly as you promised. Then I'll be able to stand up to mockery because I trusted your word. Don't ever deprive me of truth, not ever. Your commandments are what I depend on. Oh, I'll guard with my life what you've revealed to me. Guard it now, guard it ever. And I'll start freely through wide open spaces as I look for truth in your wisdom. Then I'll tell the world what I find. Speak out boldly in public, unembarrassed. I cherish your commandments. Oh, how I love them, relishing every fragment of your counsel. And that portion, I love that one. That one, I think it's just so important to remember that we need to let God's love guide us in all of our decisions, especially when it surrounds conflict or surrounds, you know, our interactions with other people, because it can be really easy, at least for me, because I'm very stubborn, um, to just, you know, shut things down and to not think, oh, how could God be using this? Or how could I better help this other person? Versus thinking, you know, like, does that make sense? We need to really just let God's love shine through us. The next thing I thought was really important is to guard what God shows us. And I think it can be so easy for us in today's modern world, in our modern showy, you know, world, to think, oh, I have to tell everybody exactly what God just told me when he tells me because, you know, then they'll know that I'm a real Christian. And I think that's something that we need to not do as much because if God's telling you something, that doesn't mean he's telling the entire world. It might mean that. I mean, you have to kind of figure out what he's saying. But if it's something that's really just special to you and really only applies to you it's almost like sometimes I think it's better to keep those things in our hearts and to guard them and protect them because you know those are special moments that once they're shared it's like toothpaste you can't get it back in the tube you know that was a really corny example I'm sorry um but the other thing that I thought was really awesome is I like how it said um speak out boldly in public unembarrassed and I'm trying to personally do that more often but I think it can be so difficult sometimes to be bold about our faith and I think that that makes it all the more important to be bold about our faith and to say it and to you know be the person who says 
the, what's right and who sticks up for what's right and not necessarily what's politically correct or what is, you know, being preached in you know, the classroom or the workplace or whatever. So I think it's just interesting. And not, not necessarily interesting, I just think it's a good point that, you know, we need to speak out boldly for our faith. Section 7 says, um, says, Remember what you said to me, your servant. I hang on to these words for dear life. These words hold me up in bad times. Yes, your promises rejuvenate me. The insolent ridicule me without mercy, but I don't budge from your revelation. I watch for your ancient landmark words and know I'm on the right track. But when I see the wicked ignore your directions, I besi I'm beside myself with anger. I set your instructions to music and sing them as I walk this pilgrim way. I meditate on your name all night, God, treasuring your revelation of God. Still I walk through a reign of der derision because I live by your word and counsel. I just really like this one because I think it's so important to remember that while in good times it's awesome to look back on things, or to, while in good times it's important and awesome when we hear God's promises for us and, you know, to reflect on those things, but it's even better when they're in bad times because they can just give us so much hope and they can rejuvenate us like it says. And I just think that was really awesome and amazing. And the next portion is portion eight says, because you have satisfied me, God, I promise to do everything you say. I beg you from the bottom of my heart, smile. When I took a, uh, smile, be gracious to me, just as you promised. When I took a long, careful look at your ways, I got my feet back on the trail you blazed. I was up at once, didn't drag my feet, was quick to follow your orders. The wicked hemmed me in, there was no way out, but not for a minute did I forget your plan for me. I get up in the middle of the night to thank you. Your decisions are so right, so true. I can't wait till morning. I am a friend and companion of all who fear you, of those committed to living by your rules. Your love, God, fills the earth. Train me with, train me to live by your counsel. And I just, that one, I loved, first of all, because it makes me happy, but it also is a huge reminder that we need to be quick to follow God's guidance and to follow what he's telling us to do because, you know, when he tells us to do something, there's a reason he's telling us to do it then. And if we put it off, we're probably going to inevitably going to end up doing it. But imagine what would have happened if you had said yes right away versus waiting and waiting and waiting until that was your only option. You know? I mean, imagine how much more you could be progressed in whatever you're doing or how much better it could have been versus waiting and being like, oh, God, no, I got it. Don't worry about it. I can do it. I think it's so important to really fully surrender ourselves when God tells us to do something or not do something or whatever. But I think it's really important to just immediately listen and immediately jump on versus waiting and waiting and waiting until we feel ready. The next portion is portion nine. And it says, be good to your servant, God. Be as good as your word. Train me in good common sense. I'm thoroughly committed to living your way. Before I learned to answer you, I wandered all over the place. But now I'm in step with your word. Oh, I almost lost the page. <laughs> uh, you are good and the source of good. Train me in your goodness. The godless spread lies about me, but I focus my attention on what you are saying. They're bland as a bucket of lard, while I dance to the tune of your revelation. My troubles turned out all for the best. They forced me to learn from your textbook. Truth from your mouth means more to me than striking it rich in, gold, in a gold mine. And I think it's really important there to just remember that, again, our trials and our tribulations and the curveballs that life throws at us are what God is using to teach us and to show us his ways and to really develop us into the best people that we can be to serve those around us. And when we realize that, the hard times don't seem as hard because while they can suck and there are definitely times when it feels like the world is going to just die or not die, but, you know, it feels like your world is ending it's important to remember that God is going to use those things to better, sorry, that God is going to use those things to better serve the kingdom later and that those things are just going to really grow you and test you and make you the best person you can be. And it's just, I don't know, I find that awesome. Um, so section 10 is, says, with your very own hands you formed me. Now breathe your wisdom over me so I can understand you. When they see me waiting, expecting your word, those who fear you will take heart and be glad. I can see now, God, that your decisions are right. Your testing has taught me what's true and right. Oh, love me, and right now, hold me tight, just the way you promised. 
Now comfort me so I can live, really live. Your revelation is the tune I dance to. Like, oh, sorry, let the fast-talking tricksters be exposed as frauds. They tried to sell me a bill of goods. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I kept my mind fixed on your counsel. Let those who fear you turn to me for evidence of your wise guidance, and let me live and let me live whole and holy, soul and body, so I can always walk with my head held high. And this one, I just think it's so important to realize that you know. Um, hold it. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, okay. <laughs> I just, yeah, it's just, again, it's important to remember that we need to let his guidance make us dance and just be so happy and joyous and excited for whatever is next in, the, next in, on, next on the journey and the path that he takes us on. And just, it's always important to remember to walk with our head held high because, you know, I can't remember what song it is, but, I mean, we have, and I know there's also a verse about it, which is what the song's based off of, um, but... It's so important to remember that we literally have the God of the universe on our side backing us up. And I mean, if that's the case, why would we be ashamed? We have the God who created the universe on our side and wanting to help us and ready to be there fighting our battles with us. So why are we so afraid of everything else? You know, like that doesn't make sense. <laughs> we have the best fighter ever and we're afraid of the little ant. Yeah. I, yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> um, section 11 says, I'm homesick, longing for your salvation. I'm waiting for your word of hope. My eyes grow heavy watching for some sign of your promise. How long must I wait for your comfort? There's smoke in my eyes. They burn in water. But I keep a steady gaze on the instructions you post. How long do I have to put up with all this? How long till you haul my tormentors into court? The arrogant godless try to throw me off rack, ignorant as they are are of God and his ways. Everything you commanded is a sure, sorry, everything you command is a sure thing, but they harass me with lies. Help. They've pushed and pushed. They never let up, but I haven't relaxed my grip on your counsel, and your great love re revive me so I can all alertly obey your every word. Now this one is important because we have to remember that God's promises don't necessarily come quickly and they don't come in the timing that we want them to. If there is noise in the background, my stepdad just came back home and our dryer is running and our dryer has been really bad lately. But anyways, back to the point. Um, so promises don't always come quickly. And I think in the last video that I posted, I was talking about how um, and Abraham was 100 years old when, he, when Sarah gave birth to Isaac. And again, if he had to wait that long, really, it's not like we're necessarily going to have God's promises like that, you know? So just another food, food, food for thought, right? So the next portion that I'm going to read is the 13th portion, I think. And it says, Oh, how I love all you've revealed. I reverently ponder it all the day long. Your commands give me an edge on my enemies. They never become obsolete. I've never become smarter than, sorry, I've even become stronger than my teachers. I can't word. I've even become smarter than my teachers since I've pondered and absorbed your counsel. I've become wiser than the wise old sages simply by doing what you tell me. I watch my step, avoiding the ditches and ruts of evil, so I can spend all my time keeping your word. I never make detours from the route you laid out. You gave me such good directions. Your words are so choice, so tasty. I prefer them to the best home cooking. With your instruction, I understand life. That's why I hate false propaganda. And I really like this portion because it's so important to remember that, you know, God gives us the best directions anybody can give us. So if we're getting lost, we're not listening. And that's really important to remember because if we aren't listening to what God is telling us to do, then we're not following his plan for us, right? And if God's plan is the best, is the really the only way we're ever going to be happy in life, why would we not follow it when he's told us how to follow it? So the next one I think is portion 14, but it might be 15 because I don't know my numbers anymore. Um, so it says, I hate the two-faced, but I love your clear-cut revelation. You're my place of quiet retreat. I wait for your word to renew me. Get out of my life, evildoers, so I can keep my God's commands. Take my side as you promised. I'll live then for sure. Don't disappoint all my grand hopes. Stick with me and I'll be alright. 
I'll give total allegiance to your definitions of life. Expose all who drift away from your sayings. Their casual idolatry is lethal. You reject Earth's wicked and so much rubbish. Therefore, I lovingly embrace what you say. Em embrace everything you say. I shiver in awe before you. Your decisions leave me speechless with reverence. I really like that portion because it just is a great reminder that we need to treat our time in God's presence and in his word as like going to an oasis in a desert versus being, oh, just another thing on the to-do list. It should really be something that we look forward to every morning or every afternoon, you know, if you literally cannot do in the morning. But it's just, it should be something we look forward to versus being like, oh no, I have to, I have to do that today or, oh, I have to go to church on Sunday or whatever. Like really spending time with God should be one of the best things in your week, you know? The next portion is the one right after that. And I don't know what number I'm on anymore, so sorry. But it says, I set up for justice in the right. Don't leave me to the mercy of my oppressors. Take the side of your servant, good God. Don't let the godless take advantage of me. I can't keep my eyes open any longer waiting for you to keep your promise to set everything right. Let your love dictate how you deal with me. Teach me your, from your textbook on life. I'm your servant. Help me understand what that means, the inner meaning of your instructions. It's time to act, God. They've made a shambles of your revelation. Yea, saying God, I love what you command. I love it better than golden gemstones. Yea, saying God, I honor everything you tell me. I despise every deceitful de detour. And this one, again, to me, just shows that we really need to let love dictate how we handle others. Because if it's saying, let your love dictate how you deal with me when we're talking to God, if God lets his love dictate when he's dealing with us, we need to be letting love dictate when we deal with others as well. So the next portion, which I think is portion 16, says, every word you give me is a miracle word. How can I help but obey? Break open your words. Let the light shine out. Let ordinary people see the meaning. Mouth open and mouth open and panting. I wanted your commands more than anything. Turn my way. Look kindly on me, as you always do with those who personally love you. Study my steps with your word of promise, so nothing malign gets the better of me. Rescue me from the grip of bad men and women, so I can live life your way. Smile on me, your servant. Teach me the right way to live. I cry rivers of tears, because nobody's living by your book. And that one, I think, is important when it says those who personally love you. Because really, we need to be personally loving and pursuing and seeking after God and not just doing it because it's what our family does or what our spouse does or what our whatever does. It should be something that we're doing because we want to, not because anybody is forcing us to or anybody's making us feel like we need to do that, you know? So again, I think this is portion 17, but I'm not sure. But it says, you are right and you do right, God. Your decisions are right on target. You rightly instruct us how to live, ever faithful to you. My rivals nearly did me in. They persistently ignored your commandments. Your promise has been tested through and through, and I, your servant, love it dearly. I'm too young to be important, but I don't forget what you tell me. Your righteousness is eternally right. Your revelation is the only truth. Even though troubles come down on me hard, your commands always give me delight. The way you tell me to live is always right. Help me understand it so I can live to the fullest. And this one again is telling us that we don't want to forget what God tells us. We don't want to forget his words to us or over us or anything like that. And that we really need to remember those things, especially in the trials when they come. And I also really like how it says, um, your commands always give me delight. That means that they always, even in the hard times and in the good times, give us delight. And that I just thought was, again, really impactful and awesome. And the last portion, I think it's portion 22, but again, I got my numbers wrong, so I think it's the last, but it's the last section. But it says, let my cry come right into your presence, God. Provide me with the insight that comes only from your word. Give me, sorry, give my request your personal attention. Rescue me on the terms of your promise. Let praise cascade off my lips. After all, you've taught me with You've taught me the truth about life, and let your promises ring from my tongue. Every order you've given is right. Put your hand out and study me, since I've chosen to live by your counsel. I'm homesick, God, for your salvation. I love it when you show yourself. Invigorate my soul so I can praise you well. Use your decrees to put iron in my soul. And should I wander off like the lost sheep, seek me. I'll recognize the sound of your voice. I really like how it opens and it says, let, me, let my cry let my cry. We have to really be willing to cry out to God in both the good and the bad. And I think that that's something that a lot of us kind of don't think is okay, but it totally is. And I just thought that was really awesome. And 
I also took that as physically like crying, like sobbing crying versus like screaming crying, if that makes sense. And it's going to be lame, but I'm definitely a crier. And reading that, it's like, you know, God can handle us when we're emotional. I mean, (laughs) he made emotions, so I think he knows how to handle them. But I don't know. That was just my thoughts on, wow, I talked a lot longer than I thought. But that was just my thoughts on Psalm 119 this morning or afternoon it's afternoon um and i just wanted to share them with you guys because you guys said that you were interested in a bible study today so that's what i tried to do um but yeah if you guys have any thoughts on psalm 119 or you guys have any favorite psalms of your own let me know in the comments down below or send me a dm on instagram um which again my instagram is always linked down in the description and if i ever mention teas i try and find them and link them in the description as well for you guys and um, I just hope that you guys are having a great week so far. This is hopefully going to be going up on Monday or Tuesday. But, um, yeah, I wasn't the most in-depth video today, but I, uh, just wanted to share my honest thoughts on it. If you guys really enjoyed it, just, you know, feel free to leave a like and maybe share it if you feel like somebody else could get something out of it. And if you guys want to join our little awkward... <laughs> like how I said awkward go me anyways if you guys want to join our little tea and god community feel free to hit the subscribe button down below and if you guys want to follow on instagram like I said it's gonna be linked as well but if you guys leave knowing nothing else I hope you know that you are loved and cherished by the god who created you and that you are so precious to him and I will leave you guys with that I hope that you are sipping your tea and mine is probably cold now but I hope your tea was good so I will see you guys all in next week's video bye guys